My name is All Time, and today we're checking out five brand new Mandela effects. That's right, five things that tons of people remember being one way, but are now different. It could be as simple as a name or a logo changing, or as complex and disturbing as a massive disaster that seemingly never existed before now existing. Anyone who has played enough games or watched enough TV shows recognizes this. It's a defibrillator, a device often shown bringing back someone who has just flatlined or died. Now, if you're like me, you've seen that exact sentence played out a million times before. Defibrillators do not actually bring people back once they have died or flatlined. In fact, this has never been the case. Defibrillators are used to stabilize a heart that isn't beating correctly. It does not and has not ever revived someone after they have died. So what do you think about this? Is that nothing more than a widespread misconception that has been repeated hundreds of times? Or is this yet another example of the Mandela Effect? If it is indeed nothing more than a widespread misconception, wouldn't you believe someone at some point would have properly researched the defibrillator? It's shocking to me that it has been featured on so many medical shows, written or consulted on by medical professionals, and this detail has been overlooked every single time? Anyway, let me hear your thoughts below and your feelings in the comments, because this one's pretty weird. Our next Mandela Effect is a small but apparently strange spelling change. This one looks weird to me, but it's the comments of others that solidified this in today's video. What spelling change am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about this famous leading lady's name, Zoe Deschanel. She has had roles in many popular movies, ranging from Elf, 500 Days of Summer, and Bridge to Terabithia. Remember that one? We've covered that before. To TV shows like New Girl on Fox, where she received an Emmy nomination and three Golden Globe nominations. All this to say, Zoe Deschanel is a widely known actress, so the spelling of her name shouldn't be that hard, right? Well, let's give it a shot. How do you spell Zoe Deschanel? Is it Z O E Y? Or is it Z O O E Y? So, with this Mandela Effect, the spelling looks off to me, but I'm not a diehard fan of hers, like others online, so I'll leave the final judgment in your hands. But her name is in fact spelled with two O's, not one. It makes me want to say Zooey, Zooey Deschanel. I had never really looked at her name spelling, but it seems that plenty of people online have, and that this weirded them out enough, they spoke up. Is this how you remember Zoe Deschanel's name being spelled, or has the Mandela Effect struck again? Let me hear below. Seriously though, it's hard to keep up with all of these Mandela effects. They just keep coming, and when you feel like all of them have been found, and that this is it, boom, ten more just appear. Some okay, some bad, and some really troubling for those affected. This next Mandela effect continues the idea of being really troubling for those affected. If you don't play video games, this one's probably not going to affect you. But if you do play video games, and you've played this specific game, this might hit you hard. Up next, we're talking about Mario Kart, the legendary arcade-style racing game that people have enjoyed for decades, and today, specifically, the Nintendo 64 version, Mario Kart 64. This Mandela effect has to do with the insanely unforgiving track, Rainbow Road. The difficulty comes from its trackless edges and hairpin turns. So tell me, did Mario Kart 64's version of Rainbow Road have rails along the sides? Yes or no? The Mandela effect here is that so many people remember Mario Kart 64's Rainbow Road not having rails, thus making it a much tougher race. But apparently it's always had rails? The Super Nintendo version of Mario Kart's Rainbow Road did not have rails, but apparently the N64 one did. This seems like an open and shut case of potentially mixing up the games, but numerous people online claim that they have only played the Nintendo 64 version. So why would they know what's in the older version of Mario Kart that they've never played? Up next is a Mandela Effect that absolutely blew my mind. Every American has at least heard of Paul Revere, the American revolutionary that took a midnight ride through Concord to warn his fellow colonists that the British were coming. This April 18th, 1775 ride was to spread the news that British soldiers were on their way. The story goes that his warning gave the local militias a tactical advantage in the battles of Lexington and Concord. Well, just how accurate is this? Here's my question. 
Did Paul Revere ride through the streets shouting, the British are coming? Yes or no? The answer is no. For starters, he wasn't alone on that fateful night. He rode with two others. Secondly, he never even made it to Concord, which was the location of his famous ride, meaning he never once shouted, the British are coming. The famous line and ride was actually completed by one of the other riders that night. In fact, Paul Revere, as of now, was apprehended by a British soldier before he even really got started. Later in the night, he did eventually get away after questioning, but by leaving his horse behind and fleeing. By the time he arrived at his destination, the war had already started. So tell me, is that what you remember learning? Was Paul Revere an American patriot and revolutionary war hero? Or was he just a guy that tried to do what he thought was right but ultimately failed to accomplish his goal? Upon discovering this Mandela effect, I read through article after article trying to get all the facts straight and to make it make sense, but it just simply doesn't. Paul Revere never completed his ride and he never shouted, the British are coming. Now, some of you may point to the poem Paul Revere's Ride as a counter to this Mandela effect. But the thing is that poem was published 40 years after Paul Revere's death and nearly 100 years after his supposed ride. I don't know about you, but this Mandela effect trips me out so hard. Let me hear your thoughts below. Since history seems to be constantly changing and altered due to the Mandela effect, I'm actually working on a new video which will cover five really interesting historical events that have changed from the way that you remember them. I plan to release this video within the next two weeks, and I hope that you are all looking forward to it. And if you're enjoying this video, be sure to like and subscribe because I've got a lot of great ideas for this new year. Let's get to number one. The classic 1939 movie, The Wizard of Oz, has been covered many times on this channel. Apparently, this movie is the Mandela Effect gift that keeps giving and giving and giving. On one hand, that's pretty amazing, right? It's a great resource for new Mandela Effects. But on the other hand, it's terrifying how a movie that so many people have watched so many times just keeps changing and seemingly updating. This movie has previously been featured in three different videos of mine, so I decided to create a video 5 Wizard of Oz Mandela Effects. After that video was released, I swore that was it. Nothing new could come from this movie, blood from a stone, the well has run dry, and yet here we are. Today I'm talking about the Tin Man. Now, before I show you a picture of him, I want you to visualize details of him. The color, the texture, little details like that. Now that you remember him, here is my question. Does the Tin Man wear a metal bow tie? Yes or no? I'm not sure what you answered. But if you said no, you're wrong. <laughs> the Tin Man does indeed have a metal bow tie at the base of his neck. Not only that, he also has a metal collar and rivets down his chest. When looked at as a whole, it's equivalent to a button-up collared shirt with a bow tie. Have you ever seen this before? I must have seen this movie a hundred times and have never once noticed the bow tie or the button-up collared shirt design that all the pieces connect together like that. So what do you remember? Do you have any recollection of the Tin Man having a metal collar around his neck with a bow tie? I'm really, genuinely curious what you have to say about this. 